It is wonderful to be involved in, in a project where you're carving inscriptions that will last a substantial amount of time. I am Nicholas Benson and we are in the John Stevens shop in Newport, Rhode Island. My grandfather uh, designed the inscriptions for the uh, Marine Memorial uh, over at uh, Arlington Cemetery for Iwo Jima. And my dad designed and carved the inscriptions on the uh, FDR Memorial, Kennedy Memorial in Arlington Cemetery. I designed and carved the inscriptions on the National World War II Memorial, the uh, National Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial, uh, the National Eisenhower Memorial, and the American Veterans Disabled for Life Memorial over by the Capitol Building. Back in 1698, John Stevens, who was a Mason in Oxfordshire, England, moved to Newport, Rhode Island, and set up shop here across the street in 1705. The mortality rate being what it was back then, um, he ended up uh, making gravestones. That family, the Stevens family, ran this business for five generations until 1926 when my grandfather bought the place and I am the third generation of, of my family, the Bensons. When I was 15, I learned how to carve during that period and uh, I took to it very quickly. By the time I was 18 and I wasn't hadn't even been working here full time, my father took me down to the National Gallery of Art with him to carve into the physical wall of the West Building in the Grand Rotunda. I said, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. This is uh, more than a little daunting. Johnny Carawan of the National Park Service approached me about doing these two marker stones. And he thought, hey, it would be wonderful to have a shop that's been going ever since the colonial era make stones for these two Frenchmen. We're making two memorials for a couple of French officers who had died during the revolution and were not uh, their graves were not marked. The lieutenant died in a naval battle. We do know that the major was an aide to the Marquis de Lafayette, who was a very, very famous figure. He left the comforts of, of the high life to come over here and forward the cause of liberty. And he paid for it with his life. And, and I feel they really deserve our uh, gratitude and I'm here to give it to him. This is just white poster paint, and what it is is it's really a guide for Paul to follow in terms of where he's going to be V-carving. In this case, I'm carving each letter as if it were to be gilded. Shallow here, deeper in the, in the diagonal stroke. So that's what makes V-cutting so, so pretty. We decided to go with this beautiful slate from Buckingham, Virginia, that ties in very, very well with so much of the slate that's already in the cemetery. So you're getting a contemporary piece of stone but what it's doing is it's evoking so much of the flavor of the past. And that's what I'm doing with these little markers. Something about the curves in, in the way in which I'm laying these things out sort of rattle in the back of my head uh, French. There's, there's a French quality to them. There in the cemetery, Admiral de Tournay has uh, quite a large stone. Uh, the land around him was consecrated for as a Catholic ground and the two smaller markers are going to be going in close proximity to his stone. 
So to think that we're memorializing these two French men uh, from, an, from, from an era of, of, of uh, 250 years ago is uh, quite, quite a nice line in terms of uh, the history of the United States of America. It's more than a love thing. It's, it's all emotions are wrapped up in this whole process. What I am is driven by it. You know, I've given myself over to it entirely. And it's really all I want to do. So we measure ourselves historically. We put ourselves up against carving that's hundreds, if not thousands of years old. Someone visiting Trinity Cemetery can come by and, and read his little bit of information and walk away with it. And he's not forgotten. What a joy it is to be involved with this uh, historic continuity.